The for each method of an array allows you to execute a provided function for every element of the array. So let's say we have an array of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we can call numbers.foreach. In the parentheses, we can specify what action do we want to perform on every number. Let's say print double. This is just the name for a function that I create now. Function print double. Here I use number as the parameter. In this function, we're just going to perform a simple console log to print out the number, but we're going to multiply it by 2, because the function is called print double. The number parameter represents the current number of the array. Since we have five numbers in our array, this function is going to be called five times. On the first iteration, the number variable is going to be 1. So the console log is going to say 1 times 2, which is 2. In the second iteration, we calculate the second item of the array, 2, times 2, which is 4, and so on. In the console, we can see that we get every number of the array times 2. So the for each loop allows us to call a function on every item inside the array. But sometimes we don't want to write a separate function for this. Here's an example of how to write the function directly inside the parentheses of the for each method. We have an array of words, and we want to turn all of these strings into uppercase letters. For that, we would need to call the to uppercase method. This is a simple string method that we could use for that. But how do we access every item of the array? We simply access the words array and call the for each method. In here, we write a function. And we're going to pass the word as the argument, which will be different with every iteration. And inside the function, we console log the word dot to uppercase. And this will print all the words in uppercase letters in the console. But the for each method actually has more than just one parameter. In fact, it has three. Simply write commas to get the second and third parameter. They are usually called index and array, because that's what they are. The index refers to the position of the current element in the array. The first element in the array has an index 0. The second one is index 1, then index 2, but you already know this if you're familiar with arrays. Now this parameter will be useful in combination with the third parameter, which is the array. Normally, we only access the current item in the array. But with this parameter, we also have access to the entire array. For example, we could console log the array at index 0. And this would just print the word apple three times, because the for each loop will perform the code on every item, and we have three items. But we're not even using the word parameter, we are always just printing the word at index 0. One cool example that uses the index parameter is this one. Here we console log two words. First, the current word of the iteration, but also the array at index index plus 1. So we use the current index, which will first be 0 for apple, and then we calculate plus 1 to get to the index 1, which is bank. But in the second iteration, the current index is going to be 1. So index plus 1 is going to be 2. So this will print bank and cable. And then on the last iteration, it's going to say cable and undefined. Because in the third iteration, we are at index 2. But there is no element coming next in the array at index 2 plus 1. So it's going to be undefined. One crucial thing to understand about for each loops is that performing something on the items of the array does not change anything in the original array. So in the previous example, where we turn everything into uppercase letters, then our uppercase words only exist within the scope of the for each method. When we console log the entire thing afterwards, everything will be normal again. The original array remains unchanged. And that is very important to understand. If you do want to change the original array, then you have to address it directly, and then override the array at the current index. For that, use the second parameter. And here, you would simply assign the word and use two uppercase. If we console log this now, the array will be changed successfully. But in most cases, it is still better to just leave the original array as is, and instead perform our changes on a copy of the array. That is a much safer approach. You would do that using the map method. The map method works just like the for each method, with the difference that it has a return value. It returns a new array based on the old array with the changes we performed inside. And since it returns a new array, we would assign it to a variable. That way, we both have the original array and the modified copy. If you want to learn more about the map method, but also filter and reduce, which are the three most popular array methods in JavaScript, then I will link the video on that right here when it comes out. In the meantime, you can always learn more about web development on this channel. My name is Fabian, and this was Coding2Go, and I will see you in the next video.